Today we are starting a new design challenge. In December of 2011, Iran captured an unmanned United States RQ-170 Sentinel drone. At the time, the aircraft was flying over Iran. Iran claimed that it just took over the aircraft and safely landed it. Later, in December of 2012, Iran announced that it had also captured the United States' Scanning Eagle drone using the same technology. Then, in January of 2016, two small patrol boats belonging to the United States Navy, called Riverine Command Boats, were traveling from Kuwait to Bahrain. They ended up deviating from their planned route and ended up in Iranian waters. Defense Secretary Ash Carter later stated that the boats suffered some sort of navigational error. Then, even later in June of 2017, the United States Oceanic Administration found that at least 20 ships near the Russian New Rossik port had incorrect GPS information. Here is a map showing one of the boat's actual positions. Here's the ship, ship's pos actual position versus the position that GPS was giving them. This distance between the actual and the GPS positions is on the order of 25 nautical mile, miles, while this text in the red box here says safe 100 meters, meaning the accuracy of the GPS signal is supposed to be within 100 meters, not 25 nautical miles. What all of these examples have in common is that there was a temporary navigational error on a vehicle or a group of vehicles that typically have no trouble navigating around. Ships and aircraft typically navigate using satellite signals transmitted by Global Navigational Satellite Systems, or GNSS for short. The acronym GNSS describes any satellite constellation that provides positioning, navigation, and timing, so PNT, services on a global or a regional basis. Here in the United States, we are most familiar with the Global Positioning System, which is GPS, but some other countries have generated their own GNSS systems, such as China, Russia, Japan, the European Union, and India. GPS satellites are about 18,000 kilometers or 11,000 miles above the ground. So once a satellite signal reaches the ground, it is quite weak. Because of this, GNSS signals are subject to spoofing. Here's an example of GPS spoofing. In this example, an attacker is intercepting real navigation signals sent by satellites. Here's the attacker. The attacker deliberately tampers with the information carried by the satellite signals. Then, they transmit the tampered signal to a user, like the crew on this ship, shown here, who are either unaware that they are receiving a fake GPS signal that is stronger than the real GPS signal, or by the time they figure it out, it's too late. So in this case, the fake GPS signal causes the crew to believe that they have blown off course. So they think that they're going in this direction, of the direction of the blue line when in reality they are still on course on the white line. When the crew resets the ship's path in order to get back on course, they unwittingly guide the ship onto a new route in the direction of the red line. So in all of the navigation errors, the examples that we looked at earlier, the ships or the aircrafts may have been victims of GPS spoofing. Iran could have used GPS spoofing to safely land the drone aircrafts. They could have used it again to cause the two riverine command boats to end up in Iranian waters. And it seems plausible that spoofing is the reason for the 20 boats to receive geolocation data indicating that they were located on land rather than in the ocean. GPS spoofing, of course, is a big concern since society is relying more and more on signals transmitted by GNSS satellites in order to function. For example, electric power grids and banks rely on timing information from satellites. So here they get timing information. Here's the satellite in the middle. And cars, trains, ships, airplanes, cell phones, the internet, 
and smart electrical systems rely on both timing and position information. So what can we do about this? How can we ensure that people and systems are getting reliable PNT data? Well, there are different approaches to solving this problem, like increasing the security of the GNSS signals as the military does. Military receivers use encrypted GPS signals to ensure that they are receiving an authentic signal. But encryption is not possible if we want everyone to be able to access and use GNSS signals. Also, even if GPS signals are encrypted, they are still subject to jamming technologies. Alter alternatively, we can try to improve our ability to quickly detect fake signals. But since this is an electromagnetics course and not an information security or signal processing course, let's try another possible solution, which is to develop a backup system to GPS. That is, let's see if we can develop a more robust system that transmits data to users in a manner that cannot be easily spoofed. If the signals can't be spoofed easily, then this makes the data that is transmitted much more secure. Perhaps the positioning data won't be as accurate as satellite GPS, but since we're just developing a backup system, a certain amount of degraded accuracy should be acceptable. This is the design challenge for the second part of this course. Our goal is to design a robust geolocation system that can provide reliable positioning information to users around the world. For the moment, we're just going to focus on getting geolocation data to users, and we're not going to worry about getting timing information to them. This geolocation system should provide sufficient accuracy so that in the case that GPS signals are spoofed, users can quickly see the disagreement between the two sets of geolocation data, one from the satellite GPS and one from the new system we're developing, and then the users can quickly realize that there is something wrong. In order for this backup system to be reliable, it should provide signals to users that cannot be easily spoofed, or else it would suffer from the same problems as the satellite-based GPS signals. And lastly, it would be beneficial, although not required, if the new geolocation system could work in locations where satellite-based signals are not available, such as indoors and in caves. So, how should we begin?